When I was in high school chemistry, naming hydrides was always the thing I lost marks on because it didn't make sense to me that hydrogen could have a minus charge, but it can. When hydrogen, a non-metal, and I know it's on the left side of the table, but it's the only exception to that staircase rule here. Everything to the left of the staircase except for hydrogen is a metal. Hydrogen, you have to memorize, is a non-metal. When a non-metal bonds with a metal like sodium or potassium or calcium, the metal will give away its electrons and the non-metal will accept those electrons. That's the definition of ionic bonding. And so what happens here is that sodium in group one brings one valence electron with itself. Hydrogen also in group one also brings one electron with itself. Now, there's no octet rule here because, first of all, we don't even have eight electrons, but hydrogen goes with the doublet rule. It only needs two electrons to be happy or stable, or like helium, the closest noble gas. So what happens here is the metal donates its electron to the non-metal, just like a regular ionic bond. That is going to go over there. And what do you end up with? Well, you end up with a sodium atom that has no electrons in what was its outer shell and a plus one charge because it lost a negatively charged electron. Hydrogen ends up with two electrons, one, two, and that is one more than it started with, so it gets a minus one charge. It's very odd to see hydrogen with just its doublet of electrons, but that is the hydride ion. Now that can occur with other metals as well, like calcium hydride. Calcium is in group two of the periodic table, so it brings two valence electrons with it. Ca12. And since hydrogen is bringing one electron each, it might not be a surprise that you need one hydrogen for that electron and another hydrogen for that electron to join. Let me draw that transfer for you. Oh, calcium, the metal, donates its electron to the non-metal. Calcium, the metal, transfers its electron to the non-metal, just like all other ionic compounds. And so you end up with calcium with no electrons in what was its outer shell. It lost two, so that's a plus two charge. And the hydrogens end up with two electrons, one that it brought and one from the calcium. That gives it a minus one charge. There is your hydride ion. Now I have two of them, so I should probably draw a second hydride ion on the opposite side. There we go, there's your completed Lewis structure for both calcium and sodium hydride. All other metal hydride Lewis structures will look like these. You'll just have a different number of H's, depending on how many H's you need to satisfy the metal's positive charge. Congratulations, not too bad, once you just get used to the idea that that is a stable ion. There you go. Best of luck.